Okay, this is a uh, review of the uh, mechanical design concepts for non-mechanical engineers. It's a um, very quick uh, run through on some of the key concepts. So it's a bit of a flying quick run. Um, just for if you try to log in. Um, it's basically part of our micro course presentation. So we do these every few weeks. We do a new uh, presentation. This is um, really in with you if you're involved with the equipment, machinery. We we'll discuss through some of the key areas there. So we just want to really want to look at some of the common material properties, and then also really talk about vibration. So it's a very crash course in mechanical engineering in the space of um, a few minutes. So really just a quick introduction mechanical materials, vibration, and then a quick conclusion. So very quick and uh, very effective. So first of all, materials. Um, the good old chestnuts of tension and compression. Um, tension is obviously um, you pulling got forces in opposite directions and, of course, over a particular area. Um, or you could have compression, which is in that direction here. Tension or compression, and of course, you could get the material breaking as a result. So, you have concepts of stress and strain here. Stress may be defined as load over area. So, obviously, the smaller the area for a particular load, the greater the stress, or obviously, the greater the load of a particular fixed area, the stress goes up as well. And then, strain is the deformation of the um, component over the original length. So, it can be normal, shear, or torsion. Torsion is an interesting one, but it's a twisting action. Um, can't be measured directly, but deformation can be. So that's what we look at. So stress is um, force per unit area, and uh, newtons per square meter, because force is in newtons, and area is in um, square, um, meter squared, or sometimes millimeter squared. So sigma is the stress in newton per square meter. P is instantaneous force applied perpendicular to the cross section in newtons. Kilogram force in the old days, and of course the area. Um, so you can have stress. Uh, object in compression has compressive stresses, and um, in tension, in other words, pulling it apart, is tensile stresses. So elastic deformation is quite interesting. It's obviously um, it's a non-permanent deformation. So as you can think about a plastic pullet, it goes back to its original shape. So this is a very interesting chart here. Uh, elastic deformation is sigma equals uh, is the modular modulus of elasticity, Young's modulus, and typically for metals is 45 gigapascals to 407 gigapascals. So this is this chart here is the interesting one. If you can see here, you've got your stress going up the permanent ac the vertical axis and the strain over this axis here. And as you can see here, as you're going up, 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 it um, is no problem at all. And of course, at this point, you have the ultimate tensile strength stress. And here you have basically a fracture occurring So elongates. And then eventually you get the uh, fracture occurring at this point here. So you have that stress strain diagram, um, which is always quite interesting. Stiffness is another uh, important thing, and this will come back when we talk about vibration how much a component deflects under a given load. So that's another important aspect. A stiff material such as diamond has a very high Young's modulus, changes shape only slightly, and for example, rubber has a low Young's modulus and shape, changes shape considerably, and of course goes back to what it was. The other little um, area, the other little um, term we use is ductility, ability of material, metal to plastically deform without breaking or fracturing. So the more ductile it is, the more likely it will deform without actually Factoring. So you can think of um, stretching um, a metal, whereas something like carbon or a diamond has got a very low level of ductility. 
Uh, toughness is the other thing here, which is resistance to fracture when stressed. And it's basically the absorption of energy. So the more the material can absorb energy, the tougher it is. So um, these are just some of the typical things. Hardness, usually by indentation. Resistance to the metal to plastic deformation, usually by indentation. Um, typical failure mechanisms that you have are fracture, fatigue, creep, rupture, and corrosion. We'll look at corrosion in a bit of depth as well. Fracture, just to look at those terms in a little bit more depth. Fracture, we've already spoken about. Separation of body into two or more pieces. Um, so let's not worry about that. Um, two possible fracture modes, type ductile fracture or brittle fracture. So fracture profiles here. That's highly ductile, and moderately ductile, and of course brittle fracture. So basically pulls apart and breaks immediately. Uh, ductile fracture is extensive plastic deformation in the vicinity of the advancing crack, relatively slow crack propagation. The crack is stable. Uh, brittle fracture is very little appreciate deformation of the fracture surface. The crack goes rapidly across and um, sudden and catastrophic. So obviously um, metal would not be brittle necessarily. Fatigue um, is a form of failure that occurs in structures subject to dynamic and fluctuating stresses such as bridges, aircraft and machine components. Um, Basically, we can think of fatigue as wear on a particular metal component, backwards and forth, for example, and eventually it breaks. Fatigue examples. Here we are, paper clip. Yeah, as you can see, uh, going backwards and forth, and eventually it breaks. Here's a fatigue example on a petrochemical pipe. I can't see this one very clearly, but this is obviously a crane. And we've had some recent examples of uh, fatigue with cranes, and obviously um, not very good here, but a um, turbine engine. So here's an example of history. Liberty ships in the um, Second World War. But, uh, th over a thousand fell to brittle fracture of welded joints. More than 200 sunk. Um, suffered. Here's another one. Suffered catastrophic catastrophic failure in a um, calm harbor. Another sort of example there. It's always interesting to look at back. <coughs> Here's an example here. This is a um, ductile fracture or a brittle fracture. Well, you can see there's very little change there. It's suddenly just crack propagated. What would you think that would be? I think you can guess it. It's not. There's no. Um, if you think about a piece of metal being stretched, this is unlikely to be that. So you could probably say that's a brittle fracture. Here's another one: ductile or brittle fracture. What would you say that one is? Send it in to me. Creep strength is ability of the metal to resist slow deformation. Um, time dependent permanent deformation, and uh, good examples of systems here, boilers, gas, turbines, and ovens. Um, I can't go through every slide here, but basically some of the key ones here. Corrosion is a, another form of uh, damage, where the process by which the metal is subject to de degradation. Um, corrosion is obviously everywhere, um, and um, it's obviously uh, chemical action, sometimes important actually, in electrical engineering it can be quite important to get a very good uh, contact with the ground to, um, for um, safety reasons in terms of um, current flowing to the ground with a grounding stake or earthing stake. But for most normal applications it's actually something to be avoided. Cause of the flow of electrons from one metal to another, and there's two types uniform and localized corrosion. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here. Um, typical parameters affecting corrosion are pH, dissolved oxygen, dissolved carbon dioxide, high temperature.
as examples of corrosion. Nice background of sea, but basically often associated with a marine environment. Localized corrosion, attack at a heterogeneous site. Parameters affecting localized are carbon dioxide, uh, pH, flow rate, material, stresses, strains, type of material, level of carbon in the material. Here's localized corrosion. Um, you could have had one here. Yeah. Uh, galvanic corrosion is electrochemical action of two dissimilar metals. And um, here's an example of galvanic. Crevice corrosion. Uh, two metals uh, in contact with each other. Occurs of washes bin under barnacles, sand grains, under applied protective films, and in pockets formed by threaded joints. Yeah. Stress corrosion. Uh, simultaneous effects of tensile stress, uh, specific corrosion environment. T corrosion here. Concrete corrosion. Um, that's obviously very hard to deal with because of the concrete surrounding the steel. That can be a problem. The last topic I just want to spend a few minutes talking about is mechanical vibrations. Um, and um, so displacement of mass backs and forth, as you know, and it can be quite useful. Here's a vibration damper. Here's a mass going backwards and forth with a spring. The typical terms used here are mass, the stiffness, and the damping factor. Damping factor obviously would be that device there, but this is just a overall diagram. Um, mass obviously is in kilograms. Stiffness is the ratio of a constant force applied in the body to the displacement produced by it. So in other words, if you have a particular force and the displacement is greater and greater, the stiffness can be assumed to be less. And the typical thing, measurement for stiffness is newtons per meter. Damping um, is newtons divided by meters per second. Um, and there's um, three terms that describe vibration. The frequency, in other words, cycles per second or hertz. The deflection or amplitude, meters, and the phase. So those are the three things. So phase, for example, if the one um, uh, waveform is displaced at 10 degrees to another waveform, that's, that's the actual phase difference. So frequency number cycles per second, that's deflection, amplitude is um, meters. Um, here's the uh, amplitude. RMS is over root 2. Phase, as you can see here, there's a relation between these two waves here. There's actually a phase shift. Could be, looks like 90 degrees. Right, it is. Forcing frequency, um, rotational frequency, <coughs> rotating uh, around. Natural frequency is a free vibration. So basically what you'd end up with here, natural frequency, yeah, I'm not going to worry about that. Multiple degrees of freedom. Um, vibration measurement, we look use transducers to measure. Accelerometers, look at meters per second squared. Um, it's basically a pizza electric principle. Basically it's a little uh, crystal and it converts the mechanical motion into a voltage signal, which we then measure. So we need something to measure a whole range of different accelerometers there. Now, just to look at uh, vibration measurement, this is actually quite important here. Yeah, this is um, very important. The frequency is below 10 hertz. You look at um, the vibration levels for the space and can be large. Acceleration yields significant values for a frequency of 1,000 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz. So you use you'd look at the acceleration, and if you're going from 10 to 1,000 hertz, it's best to look at the velocity meters per second. So this sort of gives you a feeling for what you're measuring, whether you measure acceleration or velocity or simply um, displacement meters. Um, depends on the frequency range, and that'll give you some very useful information. So 
say, is a typical example where we'd measure in a pump and actually have a look at the um, vibration there. There's some examples of good do's and don'ts with sensor mounting. Most of it's common sense, but the trick is to make sure that the sensor is actually mounted firmly onto the device you um, monitoring. You don't want bouncing around, otherwise you get extraneous extra information. Spectrum analyzers, basically what you want to do when you've got the information coming in. Here's another example, a machine train. Um, you can look at use vibration to actually monitor some of the problems that cause um, vibrations in machines. So typical defects you can look for. Uh, which should cause high level of vibration, bent shafts, journal bearings, rolling element bearings, mechanical looseness, electrically induced vibration. So vibration can um, monitoring acceleration or velocity or displacement depending on the frequency range can be a very useful condition monitoring tool. So here's a sort of typical example of a mechanical system. Unbalance um, these are all just examples of things. So here we've got an example here, parallel misalignment. You can see by looking at the amplitude. So it's a low, um, it's a low uh, frequency of vibration, and then you can actually look at the um, peaks because you've got the frequency on the x-axis axis and the amplitude on the y-axis over here, and you can then look at the actual uh, peak two times uh, vibrations in the radial direction are higher than the axial direction. You can actually diagnose um, issues to do with your device. So all in all, that's a quick crash course in some of the main issues of mechanical engineering, all done in the space of about 15 minutes. Thank you very much for tuning in.